Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. This is our final segment. And I wanted to direct you also to go to my website if you have not been there yet, heathermurdoch.com. I'm actually doing a challenge right now. Um, I, my, our pastor's been preaching, as I mentioned earlier, about attitude of gratitude, really oh, for the yes. month of November. And we, we have to be grateful all the time, but you know, November is a good time to really look at that. Anyway, so I committed to writing 30 days of gratitude. So on my, on my blog, I'm writing every single day but I lie because I've already missed two days <laughs> <laughs> because it just got too busy and I got home at like 11 o'clock yeah. at night and just didn't have time to write because it takes a good hour or two to it write really a post, does. you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but yes, yeah, so please visit my website because I would love to encourage you. I would love to hear your um you know, what you're grateful for. And my website is really a place I want to create community of authenticity and transparency like we're doing that now. That is awesome. And um, just encourage believers. Yes, you know? we so, need that. Yeah, we do, absolutely. So, okay, so getting back to your story. So we talked... Um, off camera a little bit because there's so many aspects of your testimony. <laughs> yes. I'm like, okay, Lord, where should we go next? And so we talked about job loss. So tell yes. me about that. Tell us well, what we happened. we talked about, you know, doing everything right yeah. and still not getting what you expect. Right. Um, I was kind of telling you that I was a retail manager for kind of a, a, a large company and um, did a great job for them. Mm -hmm. took over their store at a 24% decrease and increased business to an 8% increase. Yeah. We had the number one customer service ratings in the in the. Well, you're such a region. bubbly person. I can <laughs> tell that you're probably great with the customers. Um, and we were doing everything right. Um, but I took my, I was the store manager, mm -hmm. and I took my management staff to breakfast before work one day on my dime. Mm -hmm. But because they said, well, we might have discussed the business, um, they fired me. Oh wow! For doing that, they could have. They said, "Well, they could have felt like they had to," mm. even though we. Ha I had letters that said mm -hmm. no, but I was devastated when I lost the job because I was doing such a a good job as far as numbers and stuff went. I thought, but I had a boss who really didn't care for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was a personal thing. Um, never really was able to resolve that, mm -hmm. even though we had tried. Um, so I was devastated. So I'm like, okay, God, now what? I am the sole provider of my family. My husband wasn't working. Um, I, I was everything. The insurance, everything came from me. I'm like, I'm the sole provider, God. And he said to me, he says, really? When did you start providing? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God gives you the job. Mm -hmm. God directs the steps, right? Mm -hmm. That's He's right. Like, That's right. When did That's you powerful. start providing? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. He goes, well, you know that book we work on every morning? <laughs> for you know, we used to, God and I used to have an hour and 20 minutes of alone time every morning mm -hmm. before I'd walk into the store. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of my routine to drop off kids and get a bagel and go sit in my car with God. And we would talk. And yeah, I'm sure people walking thing. by thought mm -hmm. that I had lost it. <laughs> I talked to God out loud. Yeah, that's great. I talked great. to God out loud. Mm -hmm. And he talks to me out loud because mm -hmm. that's how I communicate. And then... Um, uh, it was uh, I was just I was first devastated by what had happened, mm -hmm. and it took me a while to walk through that. It just felt like such a betrayal of the company. Yeah. Because it was like I'm doing a good job for you, mm -hmm. and the company didn't stand behind me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it was just I I saw later that it was totally God. Mm -hmm. um, but God had to work with me through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness was huge. It was like, I don't want to forgive her. Yeah. <laughs> She's she mean. <laughs> she doesn't deserve it, right? She doesn't deserve it. And then it. we think about the forgiveness that we've received from right. Jesus that we don't deserve. And, <laughs> and she's mean. And, and God yeah. talked to me about that. And he said, you know, you really need to forgive her. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't want to forgive. Um, I, I kind of felt like I was justified. Yeah, exactly. And, and God's like, no, you're not justified. You know, I love what you said, the, how you said <laughs> that, that we do everything in a situation where you're doing everything right and you don't get what you expect. Right. That happens in so it many happens. different ways, you know. Um, in marriages. Exactly. In family dynamics, family. in parenting, mm -hmm. in jobs, um, even as even as servants of the Lord and in, in the right. ministry. in the ministry. So that speaks, really. So what, did, really what steps did you have to go through to reconcile that? It took me a while mm -hmm. to finally release that mm -hmm. and to release her and yeah. to start praying for her. Yeah, yeah. And to start... So do you think that was like a stumbling block then? That was part of what you had to overcome to, to come to terms with, with how it turned out? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, 
even the judge, we had had to go in front of the unemployment judge because yeah. they didn't want to pay unemployment because they said I broke their rules. Yeah. Though they couldn't find their rule in the book. But the unemployment judge was just so upset with the company. They're, mm -hmm. they're, she's like, no warning, no this, no yeah. that. You know, right, right. she couldn't understand it. Yeah. And, um, and so it was like, even the Bible talks about that. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you may feel justified. Mm hmm you still have to forget. And that's persecution, really. It is persecution. You know? I mean, you know, I, I think, I mean, I don't know what her, you know, beliefs were or anything, but I mean, even just persecution from the enemy. It's yes. like, I'll well, show you, even when you're doing everything right, I'm going to mess it up. Well, and I had to come <laughs> to terms with the fact mm -hmm. that it was never her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was reading the Bible, and now I can't even remember what passage it is, but I was reading, and it was never her. Satan used her. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was not her. Mm -hmm. It was not the company. Satan used it. I had... Um, developed a um, relationship with other stores in our center so that we could boost business between each other. Mm -hmm. So I had kind of built a little community of managers and owners and we would meet and yeah. try to figure out ways to increase business. Well, they knew who I was. You can't know me very long without knowing I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And they would come for prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. They would come yeah. into my store and say, I just need prayer today. Mm -hmm. I'm having an issue with this or that. So it was kind of my ministry. And there's nothing more effective than a praying Christian. Right. Or a bunch of praying Christians. Exactly. <laughs> and the enemy does not like that. No. Yes. So I really believe that it was Satan mm -hmm. who used her. And I had to get to that point where it was like, you know, even God says, Satan will use people around you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so I had to realize I, I didn't see him in mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I was seeing her and I not and not feeling sorry for her. Right. Because Oh my gosh, it, for her to persecute a Christian, she does not know what she's doing. Mm -hmm. So I had to start praying for her. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of a revelation to me. Yeah, yeah. That it wasn't her, it was the enemy. Forgiveness, man, it can be, it's really life-changing. And yeah. unforgiveness can really create a hard heart. Which, and it can, yes. the, it, can the, it can be the bedrock of a lot of other dysfunction in our hearts. And you sometimes know? it's hard to talk about to people for forgiveness. Because mm -hmm. it's like, but I did everything right. Mm-hmm. But I'm okay. Yeah. Well, he cheated or, you know, it's somebody else right, that did right. something. But forgiveness frees you. Exactly. exactly. More than the other person. Exactly. It's about you and the Lord. Plus, mm -hmm. God says, how you forgive, I will forgive. That's right. That's right. So I really want to be forgiven because I screw up every day. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it might be just as simple as yelling at somebody who's not going fast enough in front of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's still, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. so I need forgiveness every day. Yeah. So I need to be able to give mm -hmm. that forgiveness. And sometimes giving forgiveness when you feel like they're not justified, you know, they don't deserve my forgiveness. It's not about them. It's and about God you. gets justice. God's going to work that all out. Really we don't does. have to do that. We don't need to get revenge. We don't need to, to do that. He's going to work out the justice. Right. You know, there's a, there's a saying in recovery we use, and it says, um, keep your own side of the street clean. And um, many times, um, the reason that we're in recovery in the first place from codependency or addiction or whatever right. it is, is because <clears throat> we're so busy trying to clean everybody else's street. Right. <laughs> we call that codependency, right? Trying that to fix plank, everybody that, else. That speck in your, your, you know, exactly. in your brother's mm -hmm. eyes. Exactly. Like in yours, yeah. yes, and we are trying to fix everybody, clean everybody up, control everybody, you know, right, and, and our own sickness, right? But we just got to worry about our own side of the street. And when we are, um, walk in forgiveness, when we choose to forgive, um, that's really uh, does a, a great job of cleaning our side, you know. Yes. We can have a pure heart then when we forgive, and um, and, and you I feel lighter, yeah, exactly, exactly. It, you really truly feel it. Mm -hmm. It's it's physical. Mm -hmm. That burden is lifted off of you when you give that over to God and you just forgive. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. And I think that it's important to say here that forgiveness is not a one-time event. No. Um, <laughs> you have to choose it every day, yes. some, especially in certain hard situations. And forgiveness, in my mind, and tell me what you think of this, but it's really about obedience. It is. And if we wait for the feeling to forgive, we probably will never forgive if it's a big grievance. Right. Um, we just forgive in obedience and I have found in my own life that once I make that choice then God he works on my heart to where I start feeling it eventually mm -hmm. you know but yes. I have to make that choice first just to obey that obedience is huge. It, just in my heart and my head like okay Lord I forgive them okay Lord I like I have to do it a yes. lot <laughs> you know yes, you do. But, um, and obedience is, yeah. can be hard mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, two years I fought with God about this book yeah yeah. I mean, I procrastinated and fought with God, and disobedient is mm -hmm. what I was. Yeah, exactly. Because God had said, this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. 
and I didn't do it. I was giving him every excuse in the book, telling him why I wasn't an author, telling God, you know. And, I, and as a parent, you know, your kids sometimes tell you, oh, I can't do this because, you know. And, All these excuses. Yeah, yeah and you just want to go, really? You know, and I can see God doing that to me, you know, going, come on, Rhonda, really? Yeah. You know, just obey me, mm -hmm. and your life will be so much simpler. <laughs> and, you know, obedience <laughs> obedience is not as hard as regret. Yes. Right? That's true. And so that's, true. We, that's what I always tell myself when there's something I want to procrastinate, because that can be an issue for me, yes. too. Um, and it is with my book writing as well. But um, <laughs> it's like, if I never do this, the regret is going to be so much harder than the obedience. <laughs> right. You know? I don't want to have those kind of regrets. Yeah. I, I totally hear you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. So we can expect your book maybe out in February-ish? I'm hoping. I'm shooting yeah. for February. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, um, I love speaking to women's groups. Yes. So as I continue to do that, I hope that, yes. How can people contact you if they would like you to come and speak? Um, I am working on a website, but I don't have one yet. Okay. Um, they can reach me by phone. Mm -hmm. or They can put a link to your, to your yeah. station here. Yes. Um, but I'm in the 209 area code. Four zero three zero two seven four. Okay, good. Or they can find me on Facebook. Yeah, good. I think Rhonda I'm Johnson. This morning. So <laughs> um, good. And I'm working on all that. Being um, being fifty. Yeah. <laughs> being a halfway part, uh, point in my life. Um, I'm still learning all the technology. <laughs> exactly. Well, on that so, note, I have to. Well, I have to um, ask you to end your story because we got to go. It's actually thank the end you of the very show. Much thank for you so much, me. Rhonda. I really, I really appreciate it. you. Yes, your willingness to be here, and I. I hope you're encouraged by Rhonda's story today. There's so many elements that we can all relate to, and um, I just want to remind you. And I know Rhonda feels the same way that no matter where you've been. No matter what trial you've been through, no matter how many mountains you've had to climb, no matter where and what gutters or pits you've been in, um, there's hope. No matter where you've been, there's hope in Jesus. And He can redeem, as Rhonda said, all things. He forgives all things. He loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you. It's not about the religion. It's about the relationship. So I hope you have a blessed day. We'll see you next week. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TV.